category you might see yourself falling into. Well, and hopefully we all. Uh, and if you're falling one of the uh, bottom two or three, well, maybe uh, you know you don't have to stay there. You can you can move out. But uh, let's take a look at what is let's define wise. What is uh, definition for wise? Skillful, prudent, understanding. All right. Now we defined the word prudent last week. What, is, what was prudent? Just so we all know what that means. What does what does prudent mean? Careful and wise in handling matters. Yes. And have a good judgment or common sense. Boy, common sense in this world today is kind of kind of runs on a low. And not a lot of common sense does not seem like anymore in this world. But uh, thankfully, there are some people that have it. Hopefully, you are one of those that have the common sense, right? Um, we think about uh, Solomon. We think about Solomon in the book of Proverbs and how he's trying to, uh, he's, he's, he's talking to his son and, and hoping that his son will take heed to his, uh, to his uh, advice. Uh, along the way, I'm sure Solomon, he made some mistakes, didn't he? He, um, he made some mistakes and he was trying to share. Did anybody ever make a mistake and try to, try to keep someone else from making that same mistake they did? Yeah, that's a good thing. That's the wise and learn the hard way. School hard knocks, we call it, right? So the cancellated work code. No. Have to, it seems like more than that, they have to go through it. And it does. It seems like sometimes, you know, you can try to give your kids advice. As a parent, you'll try to give your kids advice because, you know, you've been through it. You already did the, You already did it wrong, right? You made a mistake. But sometimes you can lead a horse to water. That's another problem, isn't it? It's a miracle. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? And sometimes that's how people learn, is they learn, uh, they learn uh, by their mistakes, unfortunately. And uh, I've learned by some of my mistakes, and we all have, we're all honest to ourselves. But, um, but Solomon here is trying to, he's, he's pleading with his son, or he's encouraging his son to take note. And, and we can take note of these same things here. Um, let's take a look, uh, let's take a look at some, uh, you yeah, know, we think about this, this uh, we're thinking about um, young adults here. And this can be for, uh, for, uh, for, for older people also. But we think about friends. Does anybody here like friends? We all, we all like friends, don't we? We all want to have a friend. We all, want, we all desire to be a friend, right? But what are some things about friends? Now, we really need to be careful with who we pick as our friends, don't we? Now, why is that? Oh, yeah. They can the wrong way. Let's take a look at... Uh, we got to be careful with our friends we choose. Let's go uh, Proverbs 12, 26. Let's take a look at Proverbs 12, 26. Uh, we're going to have Mr. Mr. B, would you like to read that for us, please? Absolutely. Uh, cheat sheet. Let me go up here. The righteous is our excellent in his neighbor, but the way of the wicked is elusive. Okay. Now, what a deal. 12, 26. Um, did I get the wrong one here or something? That's the way it start out my morning, right? Get the wrong verse? It got hot all of a sudden here. No, I'm saying right. Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous is more excellent in his neighbor, but the way of the wicked is seduced. Seduce that's not the one I don't think. That's not the one I was looking for, unfortunately. That had to do with, uh, was it 12, 12, 2? No, we just going to go with it. Okay, then how about, let's, um, well, we know that we're familiar with this one. Uh, Proverbs 27, 17. I might be able to recover it here in a minute, but let's take a look at Proverbs, uh, uh, Proverbs 27, 17. <coughs> Did you want chapter 26, verse 12? I don't know. I'll have to take a look at that. What is Proverbs 26, 12? Is it dyslexic this morning or what? It says, Seest thou man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Yeah, that wasn't the one. It was a good try, but I might be able to find it. Um, all right, let's try uh, Proverbs 27, 7 in regards to friends. 27, 7, 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. 17. Wow, I'm really going out the deep end now, man. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. All right. Okay. Um, uh, no, no. Okay. Oh, no, no. Um, let me see. Well, I think, well, maybe now 
on and got myself back in my notes here. Okay, so 12, let's go back to Proverbs 12, 26. Let's see if I can get out of this one here. Then I'll feel better and have real smooth. <clears throat> but, and I think the thing I want to focus on is about being led astray. That's where I think I was going with it. <clears throat> okay, let's try it again. Okay, 12, uh, 26. Um, we have here again the righteous is more excellent. So we want to we be careful who we choose as friends. We want to choose our righteous friends. Um, um, but the way of the wicked is smooth in the way. And we think about, uh, we want to be careful. Because they say, you might say, oh, well, I can hang around with this person. Or I can hang around with so and so. And, and I'll be a good influence on them. And I can change them, you know? Well, first of all, we ought not desire to change people. We ought to desire to be a good, a good influence. But we ought, to, we ought to be a good witness. And the Lord does the change, right? <coughs> but uh, but the, the bad thing is, sometimes those. Uh, those bad habits and those things that your your friend might do that you're trying to uh, be an influence on is having more influence on you than you really think. So, uh, and then we have here, um, I got 1320. Proverbs 1320. Who do we walk with? Who are our friends? Who do we choose to be with? Um, <coughs> He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> so as we go here, a wise man will, let's take a look, um, let's take a look also at Proverbs 1.5. Proverbs 1.5. Melissa, um, well, read that for us. And yeah, we're thinking about the wise man here. Thinking about uh, what, what is what is what do you see in the wise man here? A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding will shall attain. Um, all right. Um, Proverbs. We'll go. Proverbs. How about Proverbs nine nine? What's Proverbs nine nine? Our instruction manual for life here in Proverbs. Proverbs 9.9. Nine. What do we see in Proverbs 9.9? Nine? Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach just man, and he will increase more. All right, now it kind of goes back to what, uh, like Sister Jen, you were talking. You know, you're giving instruction. You know, you're trying to uh, give someone some advice so they don't go down the wrong trail and, and make a mistake. But... You know, someone that has wisdom and is trying to give that. And what is it to give instruction? Well, it's to uh, to uh, freely transfer or hand over. You're trying to kind of share what your life experience was. And uh, they, but it says you give it to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. A wise man will listen. Will, will take into account what you got to say. But and, but um, and he will he will uh, increase and learn. So if you think you know it all. That's one thing you want to be is, is, is God's people. We ought not think we know it all. We ought to be uh, open to God's word. We ought to seek uh, wise counsel. And uh, we ought to uh, weigh it to God's word and desire to, uh, to live it. Uh, let's see here. Proverbs. Let's go Proverbs 18.15. What is Proverbs 18.15? The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. All right, the heart of the prudent. So what do we have here, the heart of the prudent? What, who, what, what does that pertain to, the heart? What is that referring to? Obviously, we think of our heart as the one that, the thing that pumps blood around our body, gives us oxygen. And we do need oxygen for our brain, because that's where everything happens, right? But, but when we think about the heart here, we're talking about the, the inner man, the mind, your, your will. Um, the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Um, I have some scriptures for the uh, pursuit of knowledge. How do you get knowledge? What's come, what are some of the ways you get knowledge? Experience. Experience, yeah. Let me see. I think uh, I should get more sticky notes and put them Proverbs all over the book. Pardon me? Proverbs 1 7. 
Proverbs 1 7. What is Proverbs 1 7? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, we can, we can get knowledge by, uh, by having reverence and fearing the Lord, without a doubt. Um, one of the things we can do is, uh, it's kind of simple, but yet sometimes we overlook it. We simply just need to ask for it, right? We need to simply sometimes just go to the Lord in prayer and, and ask Him for it. And uh, He promised that He'll, he'll give it. Sometimes we're going to find that verse. I know I have it down here someplace, but I don't know if I can put my finger on it at the moment. But, uh, let's take a look at some... Um, Let's take a look at some scriptures. Uh, let's again, Proverbs is a book that we're in a lot here right now. So let's go with Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. <clears throat> Proverbs, when you have a thought here about pursuit of knowledge. Yea, if thou cries after knowledge, and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for the treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Uh, Proverbs chapter 2, verses uh, 3 through 5. <clears throat> so, a few things to take notice here. Cry after knowledge. Hmm. Has anybody ever uh, really kind of been passionate about something they're trying to find or trying to search for? Just, oh, I can't find it. Man, it's like, where are my keys, you know? You're moving this, moving that, turning the couch upside down, you know? And then they're in the, they're in the ignition. You know, but I mean, hey, but you were really looking for it, right? And we're, they had the same thought here. You know, you need crying after. You're looking for it. You're going for it. Looking for it. It's not just, uh, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest her for hidden treasures. I don't know. There's movies out there. People on treasure hunts, man. They're going through all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, it's an, it's an effort. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, dedication, a lot of devotion. Um, and um, you think about um, uh, seek us as silver and searches for as hidden treasure. Um, we see here effort. You know, I mean, do you really want it? If you really wanted to find something, and you were looking for something, you, you'd be putting forth a lot of effort. And there's nothing that would stop you from getting it. And if, if you want to be wise, and wise, they search for it. Um, they they look for it. They get it. And then it says here in Proverbs uh, 2, 5, Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. We need to be, uh, um, and then Proverbs, you find it. Wow, if you find it, let's look at Proverbs um, 3.13. Proverbs 3.13. <clears throat> I knew I'd find it. Proverbs 3.13. Uh, see, Jacob writes, we got right here. Jane, you want to read that for us, please? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. All right. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Now, happy, what does happy usually refer to also? What is that? Blessed. Usually when you see happy, it, has, it refers to has the thought also of blessed. So blessed is the man uh, that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Um, okay, Proverbs 23, 23. What do we see here in Proverbs about, uh, about pursuit of knowledge? Let us see here. Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. All right, so it says here, it says to buy it. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. Anybody got an example of something that you can refer to and apply that like in life? I mean, I'm trying to think if you were a car collector and you had a real rare car and you'd buy it, you'd, you'd spend whatever you had to spend to get that car, but then you'd probably hang on to it. A lot of people hoard things nowadays, I suppose, you know, but but hang on to it. You, you ain't giving it up for nothing. And we think of how how uh, how we ought to seek wisdom and how we ought to desire wisdom and how we ought to desire to um, to live understand and live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. All right. <clears throat> now, this is the verse I was looking for. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I, like I said, I knew I had it written down here. I just had to, uh, my brain is going through all my notes as I'm going here. And we got, um, it's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. That's the one I was looking for. That's the one you choose your friends and the people <clears throat> hang out. You need to be careful. Uh, 1 Corinthians 
1533. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. All right. Be not deceived. So we see here, we can take note of that, that, uh, you know, um, we talked a little bit about deception and being deceived. Be not fooled. Um, but evil manners corrupt good character. That's not the word they use, but I kind of made note of that. So, um, so now we think about it. Let's think, what does the wise look like to you guys? Well, we think about the wise. What does it look like? What, what does it look like to you guys? Let's think of, um, think of some worldly wise people. Uh, think about, ah, Bill Gates. We'd say he's wise, right? Financially, I mean, he's pretty successful, right? He's got, he's got lots of money, right? So is that wise? World standards. The world standards, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's think about it. Let's see, how about, think about all these lottery winners, you know? They, they, they didn't really they pick the right numbers. I don't know if we call that wise or not, but they got the wise numbers, but they, they have, uh, they have, uh, they have uh, winners. Um, you might think, man, they got it good, don't they? Right? I think, man, they got it good. They, they look at what they have. Look at their, their, you know, their status in life. And, but that's that's not. Uh, when we think about worldly wise, maybe they got that. But when we think about um, godly wise and spiritually wise, um, they don't have anything on us, right? So we think about it. Um, oh, God takes care of uh, people that honor Him. And we think about having the fear of the Lord. That was that verse of Brad a minute ago. And that's the beginning of knowledge. Fear of the Lord, to, to respect Him, and the devotion had to walking with Him. Right? Um, we think about uh, um, God, God's blessings, um, they come upon the people that, that, that honor Him and walk for Him. And we think about uh, the wise. Mm -hmm. Trying to find my spot here. Alright, so we think about the wise. And we think about the other three in the group. We have the wise, and we think about the other three in the group are the simple, the fool, and the scorner. And the wise folks, well, um, they have uh, I keep losing my spot. Um, Okay, uh, the wise have enormous advantage over the other three people, or the other three groups, the simple, the fool, the scorner, uh, because they get it. Um, they see the things that the other groups completely miss. Um, we think about what does some of the world say? Well, wow, you're lucky, right? What we think about, think about being lucky. Um, the other groups, they might look at the wise and say, man, you're lucky, but the fact of the matter is it's not really luck. It's um, God's direction. It's, it's, luck is not the path of righteousness. Um, we think about, uh, we think about, the, it might be the path of most resistance, but uh, what, is, what is one of the verses that we can look at? It's Matthew 7, 13 and 14. And we think about this, what is Matthew 13, 14? Think about high road, safe road. Think about, uh, think about a narrow path. We've got a scripture here that talks about it. When, we, when, a, when one does what's right according to God's word, guess what? You're on a collision course for God's blessing, right? That's a good path to be on if you ask me. <clears throat> uh, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye in the straight gate, for the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. <clears throat> And many there be which go in thereafter. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now we see there's 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 two there's two directions to go here. There's the there's the, the way of the wise and there's the way of the, the, the destruction. And um, we think about uh, what are the what are the limitations for the wise? Do you uh, you have to be naturally gifted to be a wise person. Uh, you have to be an upper class, an you know, upper class echelon. You have to have maybe a certain amount of money. No, you don't need to do that. Um, 
Hey, you have to be a certain lifestyle or age. You have to be a certain age to be able to uh, be wise. Um, no, when, it has, when the wise it describes, it's about the heart quality and the core character. It has nothing to do with the social status or the income. Um, and, and how do you get into this group? Well, uh, by asking. What, is, what does God's word say? If any lack wisdom, what does it say? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah? Where does it say that? <laughs> James 1.5. Hey! Mm -hmm. Yeah, James 1.5. I don't know if it's in your book or not. If we already had to know. But anyway, great job. Yes, James 1.5. Let's take a look at it. Oh, good, 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 good. Well, thank you. Uh, so we have James 1.5. Ultimately, and we talked about it, we were talking about that in the beginning, but, if you, it, but simply a person can ask. You go to the Lord in prayer and in and, 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 uh, Humble spirit, humble heart. Uh, he'll, he'll say, what is his promise here? Um, let me see who's reading. Is it from Jer? I don't know what you guys read. Yeah. Okay, uh, John, you want to read for us or Casey, please? <laughs> no, John or Casey, one of you two. And how do you lack wisdom? Let him ask of God, because it is for all men literally, and upgrade is not, and it shall be given. All right. So if you if you you ask for his wisdom, um, if you receive instruction, hear his word, um, and and, uh, and accept the truth that he has, uh, you can uh, have this life and live a life per se of the wise. Now let's take a look at a couple of other groups. Let's think of this. Uh, think of the simple. What is what is simple? Think of the Bible. We think of how it talks about in the Bible. Uh, the simple. What? Um, um, it's close to the first group. They're kind of on the border of the first group of the wise. They just kind of, you know, they just kind of, uh, what? What does simple mean? Slow. Huh? Slow. Okay. Slow, okay, slow. Um, how about sorry thoughts, too? We're going fast. Slow, simple, slow. How about, um, as the, has the thought of, um, silly, naive, open-minded, and, um, one that is uh, one that is um, easily seduced, right? Has the thought of one that is easily seduced. What does that mean? Does that mean? Easily fooled. Easily, easily fooled, or can be coerced away from what is really maybe right or wrong. You know, they can be they can easily change their mind, right? Um, Proverbs also refers to this group as void of understanding. Think of the, the, the scriptures that will talk about being void of understanding. Uh, these guys don't get it. Uh, they would like to. I mean, they want to, but they, they just, they, they, they're they just ignorant, and they don't know it. Yeah, um, my, my Bible defines it as innocent. Like they have no experience whatsoever. So they're easily led by right. whoever. Right. Yep. Yeah, they, they, they're just innocent. They're, so they, but they have the thought that they're, they're, they're naive. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, they don't have a bad spirit. They don't have a bad attitude. You know, they don't have a corrupt heart. They don't hate God. They're not out to make fun of God or his word. Uh, they're not necessarily lazy, bitter, re rebellious, or defiant, but they're followers. Everybody ever be with them? some people like that? They're just kind of followers. They just kind of, you know, I mean, you know they know better. Sometimes it's... Did it. Everybody, again, you put your hand up and your eyes for yourself, you've probably done something in your life that, that you went along with, that you knew was wrong, or you probably knew it wasn't the best decision, but you just kind of went along. And then you grow out of that, right? At least we hope we grow out of that, right? But uh, you become wiser. But, uh, but they're, they're followers, and they become like people they're with. And we think about that one scripture you read about, uh, but be careful with your, uh, with your friends or who you choose to hang out with. Um, now these people, the, the, the simple, they have the potential to become wise. You know, they they like say they're not haters. They don't hate God. They just they just they just they just they're they're innocent. They're foolish. They're easily seduced. Uh, let's take a look at Proverbs eight five. What does Proverbs eight five say? They have the potential to become wise, but. <clears throat> Proverbs 8.5 O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, 
be of an understanding heart. Uh, so we have, see here the instruction to, uh, to be of an understanding heart, but yet they're blinded by ignorance. Um, they're not, it's not blatant. They're not willfully ignorant. We think about the next two groups. Think, what were the next two groups? Well, the next two groups, that's the fool and the scorner. We're going to be talking about them in a minute. But, but these guys, they're not, they're not outright defiant. They're not outright evil. Uh, but they just, they're just, they're, they just, they don't, they don't get it. So, um, uh, these guys believe everything the fool and the scorn are saying. They're susceptible, they're seduced, they're, they're, they have a changeable mind. Let's go, uh, let's go to Proverbs 14, 15. And they, they believe these other, they believe the other two groups. And they have the potential to believe the wise, too, but let's just, uh, let's see what it says here. Does the simple believe every word, but the prudent man looketh well his going? All right. So again, we see the simple believe with every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. And we had the definition for prudent again was careful or wise in handling practical matters, exercising good judgment or common sense. All right, here um, they totally missed the telltale signs of danger. You ever see that? You know, people. You know, it's like. What are they thinking? What are they doing? You know, uh, we need to be careful. Um, what does it say in Proverbs about uh, a prudent man? Let's take a look at uh, Proverbs 22.3. What does it, what does it uh, say for Proverbs 22.3? Simple pass on are punished. So let's think about these guys. These guys are kind of they're kind of the kind of guys that the author used an illustration of uh, people that will tie their shoes directly in front of a door that's about to be opened. <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. You know, let's let's think about this a little bit here. Uh, they think. Um, they, <coughs> let me see here. Um, they have uh, they befriend whoever will uh, embrace them, talk to them. Um, they trust whoever talks to them. They don't think any further than the end of their nose. Now everybody's seen by that. Like, they don't think of uh, what the consequence might be. It's all about kind of right now. They're kind of looking for right now. Um, and these guys, the simple folks, they can be nice and they can, um, they should be looked up to, or wait, excuse me here, let's say this right. Um, okay, well, I've said that wrong. Uh, the guys are usually nice, but they should be locked up until they become wise. There we go. That's what I meant to say. You know, I mean, because like I say, they have the potential to be wise. They just, they just, they're so easily misled. They, they, but anyway, uh, they don't think. They, they just laugh. Whatever, whatever, whatever. They don't, um, you know, they don't mean any harm to anybody. And it has to do with the thought that if uh, stupid words are explosive, they wouldn't make it through airport security. That's what our office says. But. Anyway, so the good news is that if you're in this group, you don't have to stay there, uh, because think about what the book of Proverbs says. Let's take uh, let's take up to Proverbs one four. What does it say here? Seems like really childlike. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking about if you think about the title I want before again of our book. You know, they they just they they just they just want to stay stay low, stay little, no responsibility. Um, <clears throat> Let me see here. Proverbs 1 4. What do we got here? Oh, that's To give subtlety to the simple, the young man knowledge and discretion. Okay, to give subtlety. What in the world is that? Well, to give, as a thought here, given discretion, prudence, to give wisdom to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Um, what is was that? How about how about Proverbs twenty one eleven? Proverbs twenty one eleven. <coughs> when the scorners punish, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. So we think about the uh, think about the when you think about the scorners punish, the simple is made wise. So. You know, someone, uh, you see someone, you know, life falling apart, the road of destruction they might be on, and, and the simple might say, oh, 
I get it now. You know, they, the simple is maybe wise. They see it though. Uh, they need to uh, need to make that change. But um, when he's and then has your when the wise instructed, you receive with knowledge. Uh, so he has your thought that so if you're still getting over your headache from tying your shoes in the wrong place, or if you found out uh, that uh, oh he had this illustration of uh, um, uh, where he had he had not. Like working at a fast food joint, there's nothing wrong with working at a fast food place, but most people don't live there for a career for the rest of their lives. Although, if you become a manager and owner of McDonald's, hey, what's wrong with that? You know, I mean, that's that's a, that's a good life, right? Five hundred thousand by the way. Say what? It's five hundred thousand. Uh, this is start. Started. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but uh, but you can be. But if you follow this group of the simple, you are willing to uh, to to look. Become wise, and you look to the Lord and go to Him in prayer and ask for His, ask for wisdom. He's willing to give it to you. Um, <clears throat> though simplicity is not limited to the young group. You think about think about adults. There's adults. There's just not just young folk. That hey, I got some of the back seat back there. Josh, how's it going? We got. Uh, but we have uh, we have not just young adults are simple. There's simple. There's simple adults. Okay. <clears throat> um, what? <laughs> but it's not limited to the young. Um, it's definitely part of the youth, and you know what? When you're growing up, there's there's this process of life for growing up. But um, but uh, we think about um, Proverbs. What's Proverbs seven seven say? He's talking about the youth here. What does, he, what does Solomon say here? What does he say? Uh, where are we at here? And, we and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths of young man void of understanding. Let me think about that. When you're young, <coughs> you're void of understanding, you know. But you know, who do you turn to? Where Where do you look for? You, you take heed to, uh, to 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 wisdom uh, or to good advice. <coughs> um, and let's face it, you know, it's 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 uh, inside of us. We think of uh, we think of sin nature. We think of uh, you know, we think of uh, our wiring as far as our in the flesh, but we ought to desire to uh, to become wise. To we ought to desire to grow up. Has the thought here in our book about, about growing up. Um, when we think about, um, you know, we think about if you're has your thought if you're young, you're cursed with at least a little bit of simplicity. Um, the sooner you accept this, the sooner you can be made wise. <coughs> um, it's not that you're genetically stupid. It's just that you haven't lived enough to accumulate the wisdom that God has. I mean, think about when you live. As you're growing up, you're, you know, every day you're learning, right? At least you ought to be, right? So what's that? There's another problem. You've got to learn something new every day, right? Um, but anyway, we ought to accumulate wisdom. And we ought to accumulate the wisdom according to, uh, to God's word. And, um, and in time, well, we will, uh, well, we may wise, right? Or we have the potential to become wiser. Um... Now he has the thought that uh, young people who come to terms with uh, this, that they, uh, they have some uh, issues with uh, simplicity, um, the sooner they figure it out, they can learn that they can become wise. Um, we think about sometimes there's, uh, there's many adults that can be kind of cool, as we're talking again, not just young, but there are, there are coolest adults out there that radiate simplicity. He has a thought here, he says, they radiate simplicity like a mid-afternoon sun and a cloudless day. Um, the simple could go either <coughs> they can become wise or they can become fools. So we and we suggest and we encourage if you are in that simple category, we encourage you to uh, become wise, to seek God's word, to seek wise counsel, to seek uh, to seek. Uh, be careful who you hang with. Hang with wise wise people, wise friends. Um, get wisdom. Get understanding. Ask for it. Listen. Um, take advice from others. Because um, you can't afford to stay simple, because if you do, if you go to the fool, which we're going to cover next, it only gets worse. All right, so let's see, we're going to start, yes? Psalm 19.7 is a good one, too. Um, Psalm 19.7. Um, you want to read it? Sure. Yeah. Um, 
you have it, Psalm 19, 7. I'll write it down. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Yes. So it just, as you're talking, it, it reminds me of myself before the Lord saved me. Um, and how how much just being in God's Word and reading the Word of God truly changed the way I thought. It changed my mind. Yes. And, and it's, it's uh, how's that verse go again? Uh, foolishness of preaching, man shall be saved. And we think about God's Word, and even for, uh, uh, for, even for someone that's not saved or doesn't know the Lord, if they live the biblical principles, um, they'll, have, they'll have blessings in their lives. Um, good point. And that was, you said that was Psalms? Or was that Proverbs? Oh, that was Psalm 197, yeah. Yes, Jerry? Yeah, I have another one. Uh, Ephesians 4.14 4, That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro yeah. and carried with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning, cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's a good verse, and that goes along with when we talked about the simple being, like being uh, easily seduced, uh, being naive, you know, God, not be tossed about, and uh, by people well grounded. And uh, if we can do that, and if you're in God's Word, and you know His truth, and you see the, uh, when you see uh, deception come into your life, well, you can get away from it, turn away from it, um, and you can even defend yourself. <clears throat> You'll probably get mocked or made fun of or whatever, but uh, but you can uh, be pleasing to the Lord. All right, any other thoughts? Uh, all we're going to do right now is we're just going to define the fool and we can maybe think about it. Um, when we think about uh, this third group, think about the fool, and and he's just another step away from wise. And what, is, what does the word fool mean? Um, in the Strong's, if you look it up, it has the thought of uh, perverse, foolish, uh, silly in a perverse way. Um, and then it has also the thought that you can, you can apply it to that, that group that falls in the wicked. If you look at Proverbs, if you, uh, if you talk about a fool, it can, they can kind of, the fool and the wicked can kind of fall together. Um, the fool takes simplicity to a new height of accomplishments and, and sinfulness. Um, so we'll think about that. I guess think about that. Think of some, maybe some illustrations of, of a fool, maybe. Um, I mean, you don't need people's names or anything, but just some, some, some illustrations of how a fool would act or what he would do in the world or what he would look like in the world. When you, when you see a fool, or what, how does a fool stand out to you? I guess that's what we'll ask. Does that make sense? What do you see? I mean, we talked about the simple. We talked about the wise. We talked about the simple. And what? What is the? How do you pick out? How would you pick out a fool? What would a fool look like to you in the world? We'll, we'll pick up there next week. But uh, we'll close with prayer. Um, Chris. Do you